Well, good evening. It's good to see you this evening, and uh, we're going to ask that you would please stand and sing songs with us this morning. This evening. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make whole thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known. of the Lord forever I will sing I will sing I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever I will sing of the mercies of the Lord Amen It's good to see you Would you please be seated At this time we'll take up the offering and Brother Ray is coming Amen I will pray for the mercies of the Lord. <laughs> you don't want to hear me sing for them. <laughs> don't forget our decor. That's, That's right. right. That's right. We got more to come. More to come. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> you know, there's a reason why I sit down at the front most of the time <laughs> because no one can hear me. <clears throat> Let's pray. We're thankful, Lord, for the moisture you provided for us. We're thankful, Lord, for Brother Tim and you sending him to our church and his dedication and service to you. We're thankful, Lord, for the message this morning to remind us to be attentive, to be awake, to be prepared, to be ready. And we see, Lord, that fulfillment of your word is happening around us all the time. We ask, Lord, that you bless this offering tonight and spread the offering. We're thankful, Lord, for how you've provided for this church as we continue to thrive. May we see, may we see pews filled again as we see people returning into your house because we ask these things for Jesus' name and his sake. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Brother Darrell this uh, evening. It's always good to see him. We'll work till Jesus come. <clears throat> you might not have heard this song in a while. Uh, this will be my first time, actually. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, here we go. Till Jesus come 
will work till Jesus comes and we'll be gathered home. To Jesus Christ I fled for rest. He paid me cease to roam and lean for comfort on his breast till he conducts me home. We'll Come, will work till Jesus come. Will work till Jesus comes, and we'll be gathered home. Amen. And there's two more verses to that, isn't it? Yeah, but we've only got two verses on our page, and so. I'll tell the world that I'm a Christian. just mess up somewhere or what? Some of us did. Really? really? <laughs> okay. I'm just following the leader. I'm leader. praying for you, Carol. I, <laughs> I just stopped because I didn't know what to he do. He went back to the first chorus. <laughs> Say it, Jude. He's still saying. 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 It's all the shirt. Okay, well, good evening. It's good to be good to be back. Yes. Tired to be back, but it's good. So, <laughs> the, the, this morning wore, wore me out just a bit. Yes, sir. And I think and we're, now we're ready for round two. I don't know. I, I should have eaten a protein bar before dying or something. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, we're going to kind of continue on where we, uh, with the same theme as... Um, uh, last time and somewhat tied into what we're doing in, you know, in the mornings and you know looking over the horizon and kind of being prepared for things in general. Well, I thought, well, to, for our evenings, we could be a little more precise uh, and talk about some things that are just uh, affecting us as Southern Baptist. Our Southern Baptist Convention uh, is here in just in a few weeks. There's uh, uh, things that's been a brewing for a while that I am sure will, uh, you know, come out in the in the media. I've seen some, uh, you know, uh, uh, here and there, and so I thought it would be, uh, like I said, informative but hopefully fun as well um, uh, to 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 address uh, some of these things. So we'll just start. We'll start off with a word of prayer as we uh, usually do, or we we should, and then we'll just kind of kind of jump into it. Our Father, we. Uh, thank you for uh, the church, 
for uh, the gathering that you have uh, put us uh, together to encourage one another, gifted us in different ways to where we all uh, need each, each other to be a unified whole. Uh, and Father, I do pray that, uh, that this, uh, this assembly, we would be one in your, uh, in your Son. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, give us uh, a keen uh, uh, minds as we uh, talk about a difficult and troubling uh, issue, and I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, well, like I mentioned, there has been some uh, a turmoil over things uh, in our uh, Southern Baptist uh, Convention that I think we should be aware of. I, I, I hope you don't disagree with me too much uh, on, on being able to talk openly about some of these things. I mentioned last time, you know, usually we don't advertise our family fights. You know, we just kind of, we want to keep them in. We don't want to talk about them. Well, I'm, you know, maybe I'm poking the bear here and say, you know, why don't we just talk about it a little bit? Uh, and there have been, there are several issues uh, that, uh, that have been on the burner for a while. Some, some are hotter than others. Last week kind of gave just uh, an overview of some of the, the main ones. And we, we touched on one, I'll briefly just, uh, just to recap, where we talk about this uh, disagreement or argument over the egalitarian versus the complementarian. I know those are those are the, the, the ten dollar words used, but I, you know, I see them in the Washington Post, and you know, when they're coming up and they're talking about our convention, they're throwing these words out there. And so, egalitarianism is this idea that all things are equal and interchangeable with regard to roles, roles in society, roles in the church, roles in the family. Everything is equal and interchangeable, and nothing is to be gender specific uh, with regards to uh, roles. All roles are gender fluid. In fact, in an extreme egalitarianism, even gender is gender fluid. You know, everything is, inter everything is interchangeable. And so men and women are seen as competitors. And so anything you can do, I can do better. And so it, it doesn't make any difference, male, female. It, the, 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 it has no relevance with regard to roles in the church, in the home, in society. You know, everything is equal and interchangeable. And so with that... We talked a little bit about Beth Moore, and so, hey, here's this extremely, maybe the most successful Southern Baptist that there is. Why shouldn't she be a pastor, you know? Uh, because, hey, she's great, right? Uh, well, is the role of a pastor, is it gender spe uh, specific? Uh, egalitarianism says no, no, you know. Uh, we, traditionally, we are complementarianism, uh, hold told to this, which means, that there is distinction in the two genders that are good and God ordained. God made us male and female with the different roles in mind that we are to glorify God in these God ordained roles. Men and women are equal, but we are different with different callings and some roles are gender specific. Uh, and God has specifically designed the leadership in the home as well as the leadership in the church uh, to be done by, uh, by the men. And so we are to complement each other, which is complementarianism. We have our, our roles and we complement one another in the roles that uh, are assigned to us by God. But, but over all of that issue, as well as this issue we're going to talk about, the big issue is over Scripture. Um, uh, the, the Reformation principle of sola scriptura, scripture alone, the big question is whether or not we're going to stick to what scripture says or are we going to borrow the trends of the culture around us and blend them into the church? Again, you're going to say, who's qualified to be a pastor? Do you look at what scripture says and say, this is, this is what the guideline is for qualifications for a pastor? Or say, you know, we, we kind of need to go outside of scripture uh, because that's the, the, that is the trend of the day. So that, that's, uh, that's kind of where we were at uh, uh, last week. Uh, you know, a little bit of a, oh, a, a, a touchy subject. But I might say that this week's may be more touchy, more divisive. You know, last week I put the mask on, you know, and, and, and I did that you know, as, as a joke, but there's a little bit of truth in that because sometimes when you enter into these subjects, uh, there's some uncomfortability with them. 
which is probably why we avoid them. Uh, because who wants to talk about divisive issues that uh, we are uncomfortable with, uh, especially uh, in a public forum? Well, the issue that I want to address tonight is the issue of critical race theory. Okay. Uh, ha have anybody heard the term critical, critical race theory is a huge issue and brouhaha in our society in general. And I would say probably a, a more a divisive than, you know, can Beth Moore be a pastor a divisive because this gets into I don't even like racial relations and, and, and how, how, how do you deal with this? But critical race theory is, is just, is just big. Uh, it's, it's big in our political world. In fact, the, the, the Biden administration, when they, they came in and on day one, they undid policies regarding critical race theory that were implemented from the previous administration. This is a big political football on how it's just, 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 just in, in politics. Our states are fighting over this very issue. In fact, our governor uh, just, just, just here recently was, I believe he was removed from the, the, the commission or the board uh, for the 100th anniversary for the uh, Tulsa race riots that's coming up, I, I think, j j just, just this week. I think it's May 30th. Or, but anyway, he, he, was, he was part of it. Well, the other people in the board are those that they took him off of it because he just signed a law prohibiting critical race theory in our schools. Well, that up, upset folks. So you cannot be a part of the, uh, the, the acknowledgement of this, uh, the 100 year anniversary of the Tulsa race riots uh, that's just, just coming up. So get rid of the governor. Uh, because he signed something against critical race theory. Our schools are fighting over it. I mean, it, it, it is, they're fighting over it. Corporations are pushing it or uh, avoiding it. I mean, it, just, just society and just, you know, outside of the church, it's going. Well, guess what? As the church, we're, we're living in this world. Uh, it's rubbing off on us. And our Southern Baptist Convention is fighting over this issue of critical race theory, and does it have a place in our denominational life? Uh, should it be in our schools? Well, it's really the debate is not should it be in our schools. Should it remain in our institutions of higher learning? Should it be, you know, uh, should it be a part of the, you know, our, our church life and how we deal with racial reconciliation? And I mean, it, 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 it's out there, and it is a a very, very um, a tender and divisive issue in our denomination. And so what is critical race theory? Okay, um, and, and again, y'all know this, but let me just throw it out there again. This is open for, for public discussion and back and forth. If I go over something or you want me to clarify something, please, please feel free. Um, but okay, so what is critical race theory? Okay, critical race theory is a worldview that sees everything through the lens of race. In the way that it views all of life, all of life is interpreted on racial grounds. It is, it is seen and it is viewed uh, on issues of color, uh, minority status, and oppressed status. Okay, that, that's how everything in life is interpreted and viewed. And so critical race theory divides society uh, uh, in, in, you know, it, it splits people up. It, it divides people into, there's a privileged group of people in society and there is an oppressed group of people in society. It's just, just how you, you view culture, how you view, view people, that there's this great divide between those that are privileged in life and those that are oppressed, uh, those that are oppressed in life. Uh, in this critical race uh, theory, uh, the, 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 this paradigm, um, privileged oppressors, or those that are on, considered the oppressors in society, may not even know they're privileged. In fact, 
they may not even know that they are oppressing. They don't have to know it. They don't have to be aware of it. In fact, the fact that they may not know it and are not aware of it is in fact proof that they are engaged in it because they are in the, the privileged oppressor group. And so they don't even know that they are engaged in oppressive and racist um, actions just in, just in life, just in the way that they, they live. And on the other side, the oppressed may not even know it either. Um, in fact, the, they, uh, uh, they are considered oppressed regardless of how privileged they are. It is, it is all about minority status. And minority status ensures oppressed status. And so if you can tick a box that you are a minority in some way, whether it's a, a woman, a person of color, or transgendered, or you know, what, any, minority, any minority status, that ensures you the label that you are oppressed in some way or another. And then when it comes to, quote, racial reconciliation and racial things, pigment determines privilege. Okay. That, 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 that's it. Pigment determines privilege. You know, if you, got, if you got less of it, then you're more privileged. If you got more of it, then you're more oppressed. Okay, it, it, it's, just, it's just a way of looking at the world, a way of interpreting the world, a way of, of saying, how, you know, how, how, how do we understand how society, uh, how society operates? And, and so, so this, um, this ideology, this, this worldview teaches that our, our particular society, American society, though even though when, when we became a nation, 1776, part of it is we, there, there wasn't going to be classes. You know, we, you know, from Europe, there was the classes. It was your, your family and the royalty and, you know, if you had the right blood and all of that. Well, we, there was an absolute forsaking of, of, of that. Uh, so we weren't going to have classes, uh, classes of people. But critical race theory does teach that American society, that the way our society is set up, that it was set up by racist, for the benefit of racist, and with the intent to oppress minorities. That that was the very intent of who we are as Americans. That's the way that we were founded. That's the way that it is. And so our society is designed so whites succeed and so blacks fail. Okay, that's, that, you know, that, that's the idea. That's how uh, things are, uh, you know, are interpreted. There are a lot of buzzwords associated with a critical race theory. You'll hear of systemic racism institutional racism, a white privilege, a white fragility, uh, power structures uh, because of these existing power uh, structures, speaking truth uh, to power, um, uh, anti-racism, uh, uh, equity of outcomes. Uh, equity is a, is a huge uh, uh, part of this uh, social justice uh, uh, construct, but it's not it's not equal opportunity and as far as in society. It, it has to be equity and outcomes. That has to be the same results. And so the, the, the results is what's in view. And so if somebody achieves something higher than somebody else, then they must be privileged and the others must be oppressed because it is, uh, it is an equity in, you know, in, in outcomes. In fact, let, let me just read a, a definition of critical race theory from someone who, from those who hold it, uh, from, the, uh, uh, from, this is from uh, UCLA uh, College here, okay. A critical race theory, here just, just to kind of define our term, uh, the term, critical race theory recognizes that racism is ingrained in the fabric and system of American society. Okay? 
It's ingrained in the fabric and system of American society. The, the individual racist need not exist to note that institutional racism is pervasive in the dominant culture. Like it, it doesn't even need individual racists to be there. It's just that the system itself is racist, not racist individuals, but just the system is set up this way. This is the analytical lens that critical race theory uses in examining existing power structures. Critical race theory identifies these power structures are based on white privilege and white supremacy, which perpetuates the marginalization of people of color. Okay, so, so you, you, you can see the, 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 the division here. Our society was founded upon racist. If you're white, you're privileged, you're in power. If you're not, you're, you're under, under the thumb and the oppression of those who, you know, those who are in power. That, that, that's just what this worldview is. That's the way it, and it is a worldview because it's the way you see the world. It's the way you interpret uh, s -s surroundings. And, and so really what this is, okay, this is class warfare. Okay, and the class warfare that was in Marxism has now been repackaged, and this is race warfare that's in critical race theory. Okay, it is, it is pitting people against one another based on their pigment. Okay, so June, you and I, we have got to have a problem between us because we got different pigment. Okay, and we are on different sides of, of the, the scale in oppressed and oppressor because of our pigment. And so that, that, that's how we would view our relationship between Tim and Jim. You know, whether or not we have a problem with each other or not. Whether or not there needs to be, you know, but be, because of our pigment, there is a problem. And all society is designed for the benefit of lighter pigment and for the putting down of darker pigment. Okay. Um, then, then, yes. So, if someone that of a lighter skin pigment who actually is a black person, but their pigment is really lighter, then they are well. I, than the black. Well, you. Than the darker. Yeah. Well, you, you. You probably caught me on the horns of a dilemma to where maybe my state. You know, I. I I use the alliteration, you know, with, uh, uh, you know, pigment, uh, um, and uh, um, I, forget, I forget the word, huh? Yeah, pigment and, and problems and whether you you uh, you have advantages, and so I, you know, probably you know probably not. Uh, and, and into, into that extreme, but, but that, that, that's, it does, this, this worldview divides people by, quote, race. It is a very, very divisive thing, and I, uh, yeah, Chris. The problem with the theory, most of all, is that it says the problem is there, and when you say the problem is there, you can always find the problem you're looking for. And, 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 and let, let me just say that, you know, I was trying to say, you know, pigment determines a, a privilege, but it's, it, it's really, it's minority status. If you're a minority, if you're a minority status in any way, you check a box, a woman, and that's why all of these, what we talked about last week, it's all connected because women, that's a minority status, even though they're women, I think are the majority in our culture. But, you know, if, 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 if you're in any way a minority status, you are oppressed by our society and in fact there, there's lists I, 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 there's lists oppressed than <laughs> yeah. a man mm -hmm. and, and we don't even have to get into the racism yeah. and, and, and the, the, the top of the food chain if you will uh, and I, I, I have these lists those that are privileged and those that are not that are good the type of the food chain is white male Christian heterosexual Okay, that's that's the top that's the top of the food chain, and you're a white male heterosexual Christian. These these are the oppressors in society. Now I'm going to apply this because then it becomes these are the oppressors in our churches, because who are the pastors? 
white, male, male Christian, heterosexual. Actually, they're the target. They're there, okay. But, but you know, back, back to this, yeah, I'll borrow one thing. Yeah. Well, you mentioned higher learning, mm -hmm. but in some places, they're beginning to teach this to kindergartners. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who yes. wouldn't even realize there is a difference between them. Mm -hmm. It's actually causing yes. hatred. It's an educated difference between, yeah. yeah. The, the, you know, because I... Well, it's going to, you know, I, I see the, the, the purpose of this is division. Okay. I'm and, Indian. Does that uh, make me a minority? Yeah. No. Well, yeah. Yes. well I, I said, for your work. Well, let, 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 let me just mention one thing because I, you know, talking about racial reconciliation and racial problems, and we use this term race a lot. Uh, let, let, let me just say something from, from a biblical point of view. There is only one race. Amen. Okay. Right. I, in fact, it drives my wife crazy. We're ha always filling out these forms, and they always they ask these racial questions. They want to know what race I am, and I, it, it burns through me. I, I'm human. I am of the human race. Amen. You don't need to divide me up. I am human. We're all made in the image of God, and color is not a biblical category of humanity. Right. When we view the world. God has made a lot of different colors, but color is not a biblical category of humanity. We are not to have color discrimination, but we are to have color appreciation. But there is only one race, the human race. And I guarantee that message, they don't want that message out because it brings us together. That means there's really no, no difference between us, June. Right? I mean... We're both human. We're both made in the image of God. And guess what? He made us a little bit different, and we should be able to appreciate those differences. We don't want to discriminate. We can appreciate. But, but we're one. We are made in God's image. There is only one race of people. In fact, this whole idea of race comes out of, I mean, it's part of an evolutionary construct that where he split humanity up into five different categories of people, and some were more evolved than others. But guess what? We don't believe in evolution. That's a lie Amen. out of the pit of hell. Amen. Okay? God made us. We come from one family, Adam and Eve. We come from Noah and his wife and his three sons. We're all the same family. As far as but the know, devil Adam, does want to divide us. As far as we know, Adam and Eve could have been black. Yeah, we have, I mean, yeah. I mean, I've, it, it, in fact, you, you probably put all of us uh, together. They, you know, they're, whatever the, the medium mixture is from all of humanity would, would probably be probably close to how, I mean, who knows? I mean, don't know. There's not a picture of, 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 of Adam and Eve. But, but anyway, they, you know, there's only one race. But now we have this, this, this ideology that has been around and then it is becoming more and more prominent and being pushed on what do you do with critical race theory. And I said, it's not, the question is not, are we going to bring it into our churches? It is already in our churches. It is already in our institutions. In fact, I'll talk about it in just a little bit. It is already in our official denominational life then what are we going to do about it? Now, now and, and, and when we talk about issues of race, it is such a touchy subject. And, and there is the implicit charge in critical race theory, as well as the explicit charge in critical race theory, that the Southern Baptist Convention is a place of institutional racism. This, the, 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 this is the charge. We, as... White, Christian, heterosexuals in power, we are racist. This is the charge that has been leveled against us. And, well, in fact, I'll talk about this in a little bit. Do you remember what, where we got our beginning as Southern Baptist? Right. Over the issue of slavery. Right. Okay. And so here's the evidence. And the, the, anyway, well, I'll, I'll come back to that in just a little bit. But, but he, so, so here's the charge with credit that us as a denomination, as individual churches, we are racist, even if we don't know it and not aware of it. It's just part of who we are because we live in a racist, racist culture. Let, 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 me, let me give you an example of this. Just, just within the, the last few weeks, Southwestern Seminary, uh, were you a grad of Southwestern Seminary? Your, your, your alma mater, a, um, a, uh, 
a recent grad of a Southwestern Seminary made it very public as a, a social justice uh, individual that he would not walk, would not participate in the graduation um, because the very buildings associated with the seminary triggered him and his wife. He could not be even, even though he, he got his education there and all that, he couldn't even be around the buildings because you see the buildings themselves are a reminder of the ingrained racist attitude that is pervasive in our Southern Baptist churches and in our Southern Baptist seminaries. Uh, in fact, when he... He, he let everybody know and to, you know, broadcast this to the world. A, a very, very popular Christian a, a, a singer uh, agreed with him, but encouraged him publicly and for the world to see that, that guy did, don't worry about it. I, I understand it, but think of yourself. You're just like Moses that was educated by the Egyptians so that you could go out and set free an oppressed people. Okay, so here's, here's uh, uh, probably our largest seminary, part of our denomination. Uh, a, a graduate says, I, 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 can't even, I can't even get in the building because it just triggers me so much because there's so much racism in these Southern Baptist institutions. Maybe not the individual, but, but the whole institution itself. And then a highfalutin Christian singer says, you're just like Moses being educated by the Egyptians, by the pagans so that you can have a good education and now you can go out and set the oppressors free. Did, did, did you see the, the accusation there? So why our, did you our, our education there? I, 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 so you would say that, that in the reality, <laughs> underneath <laughs> all of this, that He's God is the target. Well, yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get, and but, 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 but that, that's the, that's the accusation, the implicit as well as explicit accusation of critical race theory. Uh, the, 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 the president of our, of our convention, J. D. Greer, Greer, um, just, I, th I think it was just this year, put out a, uh, the statement, referring to many of our churches, as neo confederates and closet racist because. It, it, and he said that our, our churches are, are a place that, that neo-Confederates and closet racists would feel more at home than, than the people of color. Wow, our, our churches are, are full of neo-Confederates and closet racist? Okay. And, and th th this, this, this is the accusation of critical race theory. In, in, in fact... On that, just, just as an opposite, you know that there's a rule in progress will probably be maybe voted on this uh, uh, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the convention. But to put it in writing that we would kick out any church that tolerates racism. In fact, we had, as a denomination, we put out a statement, a resolution in 1995, publicly apologizing and publicly condemning it to the, for the world to see and the world to hear. And so it is a part of our life. We stand against bigotry. But there is a movement and an accusation that says we are racist to the core. Uh, in fact, the, the leader of the International Mission Board or the former leader of the International Mission Board just a, cup, uh, a couple of years ago in a sermon publicly repented in tears for his white racism, excuse me, for his white privilege. Um, and, and that pastors in our churches, we should be judged by the color of our congregation. Crazy. It, because pigment determines privilege. So since you know. we have a few blacks, uh, then we're light gray? Huh? Since we have a few blacks, we're light gray? I, I, I get it. You know, but, but, but again, because it views the world through color. That's, the, the, that's it. Everything is interpreted that away. And, and I'll have to say that there has a, been a great desire on our convention and, and, and you know, our local pastors and leaders and whatever for racial reconciliation. I, I think it's a terrible thing. Is it, they say, you know, Sunday is the most uh, segregated time of the week. You know, I mean, in fact, there was a, I know there was a church here, here in town that on, on the same day and in the same buildings, 
There was the white church meeting in one place, there was the black church meeting in another place, and there was the Hispanic church meeting in another place, all in the same building. I think that's, uh, it just doesn't look very good, you know, uh, because, you know, we kind of have the answer <laughs> to these, uh, um, to these touchy times and touchy subjects. But, but, but the question is, do we make critical race theory our counselor when it comes to reconciliation among, and I, I don't even like it, between the colors. Okay, let me just say between, between the colors. It's uh, impossible according to critical race theory. Mm -hmm. And segregation mm -hmm. is one of its goals. Yeah. And, and, and I'll say, and so within our denomination, many, and, and given the benefit of the doubt, many well-intentioned Christian leaders in the Southern Baptist Convention, I think, you know, have been over backwards to distance themselves from the charge of racism because that's the tag you never want to be tagged with in our society, just in general. You don't want that tag. Well, that tag's coming on us as a, as a denomination. And so now the, the pressure has been to embrace an ideology, critical race theory, to embrace an ideology that I think wants to destroy Christianity. Okay. Uh, that, 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 that is what is, is being pressured upon us as a denomination. And, and I will uh, say this, that critical race theory is anti-gospel. We are gospel people. We believe the gospel. It is the good news. There is no good news in critical race theory. Because critical race theory charges racism and there is no remedy. There is no way to fix it. There is no good, uh, good news in it. It, it, it. It's just a charge without a remedy. It brings destruction without any hope of redemption. It, it, it just divides. It destroys. There is no redemption. There is only division in critical race theory because it just divides people and divides people. It can never fix the problem. It doesn't want to fix the problem. It just divides it. It just points out a problem and points out a problem. It doesn't ever solve a problem because it's not good news. It's not the gospel. It, it, it offers no reconciliation between the colors, only revolution and only condemnation. You're white... Yeah, you're, and, and in a way, it's very similar, but, you know, instead of the, the, the class warfare and workers of the world unite and, you know, the, 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 this is color warfare and it's color division and it's being brought in to divide the people of God along whether you have, can tick a box in the minority status uh, uh, a, a, a line of things. And, and let me say that, you know, as gospel people, the gospel addresses our sin. Hey, we're, we're sinners. It addresses our original sin. And guess what? We do have a guilt from Adam uh, that, that we all share, but we have individual sins. And when there is sin in the camp, if there is a, a, a racist church, a bigoted church, or you know, in, in an individual in, in the church, do we address the sin? We, we address it biblically. We say there needs to be confession. There needs to be repentance. There is an offer of redemption and forgiveness. Okay, that, 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 that is part of the good news. Yes, the sin is addressed. It is confessed. It needs to be repented of. There is an offer of redemption and there is forgiveness. But all of that stuff is absent from the anti-gospel of critical race theory. Because it, 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 can, it never wants to fix the problem. It just wants to stir the problem. In fact, you know, in, in, in the Bible, uh, God, through the, I think it's the prophet Ezekiel, he gets on to the, the, uh, gets on to the people because they, they had this proverb going uh, there was just, just kind of a the, the saying, uh, you know, at that time that, that, you know, our fathers ate sour grapes and so their children's teeth are set on edge. That, that was it. That, that was the proverb. Hey, you know, I, our, our fathers, what, you know, back a generation or a few generations, our fathers did some really, really bad things back then. And, and guess what? Our teeth are set on edge. I'm being held guilty today because of what my fathers did. And you know, God condemned that proverb. He says, I, I don't want that spoken among our people. 
It, 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 it is not to, to, to be held on to as a truth in any way. God condemned that parable because he said every man is to be punished for his own sin. You know, the, the, the gospel comes and it, 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 it does, it addresses sins in general, but it comes to us as individuals and it addresses my individual sin. And God's law says it is unjust to punish the children for the sin of the fathers. If, if, the, if, if the fathers sin, guess what? If, if, if the founding fathers of the Southern Baptist, uh, you know, when we, we gathered, if there were, there were some sins that were, that were bad and, and we, we acknowledge them and what, you know, they're going to answer for their sins. My teeth are not set on edge if they were racist. It doesn't make me racist because my great-great-grandfather might have been. It doesn't make me guilty of holding a slave even though I... I mean, I don't know. I don't know if we were slave or free. I have no idea. But, but it, it, it doesn't have an individual responsibility on me. The guilt lies with individuals. But in critical race theory, it applies it to institutions. <clears throat> and so our denomination as a whole is guilty and no way to make an amends. But you know, and, and this is so anti-gospel because the gospel brings us together. So, so someone read Ephesians 2.14. Uh, 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 Ephesians 2.14. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I just think this, this is important because there, there is a spirit of division uh, that is afoot. Uh, and it is trying to divide the church and it's using color as, a, as an excuse to divide. Uh, Ephesians 2, 2, 14. For he is our peace who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility. Okay, so there's a, and here, the context here is the dividing wall between Jew and Gentile. If there was ever a, a divisive group, uh, the Jew and Gentile is a pretty divided group, right? Uh, still is. I mean, you know, anti-Semitism, Jew and Gentile, we're, I mean, I guess we're all Gentiles. I don't know if there's any Jews here. But that, 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 that's the biggest it's not racial, you know, separation of peoples is actually a biblical one because, you know, the gospel goes to the Jew first and the Gentile. I mean, that, 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 that is a biblical division in peoples, Jew and Gentile. But in the gospel, even Jews and Gentiles are brought together as one. In Christ, there's neither Jew or Greek or slave or free or male or female or rich or poor. He makes us one. And, and my warning against this critical race theory, it divides us into many. Uh, to fight against, uh, fight against one another. I, I will say that just as, as a convention, as a people, we, we, we gave a resolution. It was a resolution in 1995 that addressed the issue of our denominational guilt with regards to our, uh, with regards to our uh, founding uh, in, was it 1845 or, or whatever, and maybe either a past either putting up with or covering up past racial wrongs. This issue has been addressed publicly by, from our denomination in our writings. In fact, I brought a, a, a I don't know if we'll have time to read it, but, but it, it addresses this issue open to the world. You know, we are sorry for what, what, you know, for our past, but, and there is an, a, a clear uh, statement of repentance and asking for forgiveness. And then let's get along, okay? You know, the, the, and that was addressed 20, whatever, you know, in uh, 1995, that was a resolution of then. Um, uh, but there's, there was a new resolution, and let me mention this one, because this one may come up in the, in, in the media and the papers, Resolution 9. I don't know if you ever heard of Resolution 9, but Resolution 9 was offered at the last convention that we had. We didn't have one because of COVID, but in 2019, and it was... It, it was a, uh, a resolution that was, uh, uh, that was uh, submitted and it condemned critical race theory. It, it said, we don't, we don't want this in our churches and our denominations. We need to get it out of our uh, institutions of higher learning. Um, it was taken and it was rewritten in committee to embrace the very theory that it was made to, uh, to, 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 to put down. 
It was submitted to say, we don't want this in our churches. It was rewritten by the higher ups and passed saying, we do want this in our churches. It is to be used. It is in our documentation now to be used as a subordinate tool to scripture, but as a tool that should be consulted in dealing with racial issues in our denomination. Uh, in fact, let me, let me, let me just read. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll recommend if, you know, if, if you want to go a little more detail on, on some of this, I'll rec, you know, this book, uh, because uh, I'm, I'm just trying to kind of come up to date on some of this. This is a book called Fault Lines. In fact, we might make a, a copy available if we uh, have it, written by a, 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 a Vody Bauckham uh, that kind of uh, deals, with, uh, deals with this issue. But he, he, here, j just listen to these resolutions and, and how it was presented and then how it was changed. Um, it was the original resolution read like this, whereas the rhetoric of critical race theory and intersectionality found in some Southern Baptist institutions and leaders is causing unnecessary and unbiblical division among the body of Christ and is tarnishing the reputation of the Southern Baptist Convention as a whole, inviting charges of theological liberalism, egalitarianism, and Marxism. Okay, that, that, that was... That was Part of, part of the resolution. You know, we, we, we don't want this. It was massaged a little bit in committee uh, to sound like this, whereas concerns have been raised by some evangelicals over the use of frameworks such as critical race theory and intersectionality. Okay, yeah, it, 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 it was toned down to, to just a little bit. It went on to say in the original version, whereas both critical race theory and intersectionality as ideologies have infiltrated some Southern Baptist churches and conventions institution, and institutions funded by the cooperative program. Uh, it, was, it was tweaked a little bit to say, whereas evangelical scholars who have formed the authority and sufficiency of scripture have employed selective insights from critical race theory and intersectionality to understand multifaceted social dynamics. Well, you know, have you ever gone to vote sometimes, you know, and you, there's, the, there's the thing that, you know, we're supposed to vote on whether to pass or not, and it's written in such a way to, what, what do you say? That's exactly what was going on. Hey, let's muddy the waters up a little bit to sneak this in. Uh, listen to this one. The original, the, the way it was submitted because it's saying, hey, we do not want this in our churches. It said this, whereas critical race theory and intersectionality are founded upon unbiblical presuppositions descended from Marxist theories and categories and therefore are inherently opposed to scripture as the true center of, of Christian union. I mean, you couldn't get a stronger statement. This, this is opposed to scripture. We don't want it. But... But by the time it came out of committee and, and, and passed, it, it sounded like this. Whereas critical race theory is a set of analytical tools that explain how race has and continues to function in society. And intersectionality is the study of how different personal characteristics overlap and inform one's personal experience. Okay. Who's on the committee? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just, now, that, that, that happened at, at the last convention, so I'm sure this is going to come up again. But, but let, let me, just, let me just, just, just put it this way. When deception, deceit, lies, and political maneuvering has to be used to gain an advantage, to get an agenda into our official documentation... It's very telling about the foundation of what they're trying to push on us. Because remember, Satan is the father of lies. Mm -hmm. Submitted it one way, and sure enough, it just came out saying the exact opposite. And now it's officially in. Um, and, you know, I, I, you know th 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 this is a, a, a tender, touchy subject, but why can't there be an open, honest discussion on these issues? I mean, it's, it's hard. I mean, to, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable to, to talk about these color issues, you know, if you will. But let's just talk about it in the light of day. Let's disagree in the light of day without stealth and without maneuvering. Uh, instead, truth is forfeited for forgeries and in our documentation. 
And to me, this indicates that CRT is false to its core because it had to use deceit to get it in in an official way. To remake a resolution to say the very opposite of its intent shows an intent to deceive. Amen. Okay. Now that, that, that was the last convention. I am sure that this issue is, I, I mean, who knows? Maybe, I don't know how the political movings work. Maybe they, they will make it to where you can't address it. It's like things in Congress and politics. And our denomination is big, bureaucracy, and who knows what all the political maneuverings are. Maybe it doesn't come up, but it, but it might. And I'll tell you that another big deal that, that, that hit all of the seminary presidents after all of this, because they were kind of put on the horns of a dilemma, but they did come out in November of 2020, just that's what, six months ago. And they came out with a very clear statement that says that critical race theory is incompatible with our Baptist faith and message. The, 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 these are two different messages and, and they, they don't mix. And so they at least, and so they, they kind of capitulated a little bit uh, later, but at least in, in that statement, they're saying, hey, as, as seminary presidents, this doesn't square with the gospel, and it doesn't square with what we say we believe as, as, as Baptist. Well, when they came out and said that, that critical race theory is incompatible with our Baptist faith and message, that really stirred things up. <coughs> And it made some, you know, some churches and some pastors are really mad. And there's been, you know, debates going back and forth. It caused a big dust up. Some churches have left the Southern Baptist Church, Southern Baptist uh, Convention. And guess what? Some prominent black churches have left the Southern Baptist Convention. And guess what? We don't want a bad PR image of black churches leaving our denomination because it makes us look like racist and so the pressure is on to capitulate to do do, 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 do we bring this in and, and as a way to address address tensions between the colors to where as Christians we got the answer to this Amen. we can get along and, and again the, the whole question of all of this is is the Bible sufficient to instruct us on how to deal with bigotry or racism or, you know, is the Bible enough? I mean, does it address this or, or is this topic too tough for the truth of Scripture? You know, it, it, the, 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 this is a hard one. And so, you know, we, you know, I've, we really got to go outside of the Scripture. But I think as Baptists, we ought to say, I, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God. And it can address this issue. It can fix this issue. I mean, the, the, the scriptures are totally sufficient. It equips us for, for every good work. I mean, it, it doesn't lack, it leave us lacking in anything. Uh, so Psalm 119, I think, uh, verse 24, you know, God's, uh, God's word is seen. Your, your commandments are my counselors. And so we don't need to bring in outside ideologies as our counselors to kind of sit and say, you know, we, uh, a white guy and a black guy got some, some problems. Let's sit before a counselor, and so we're going to sit before critical race theory to stir up the problem. Or, or do we say, okay, a black guy and a white guy have, have a problem, and, and so let's sit before the Scriptures Amen. and let the Scriptures Amen. fix the problem. Amen. And, and I, th I think we need to really be careful because if... If we bring in some of these outside ideologies, we need to be aware because its very purpose is our destruction. And its purpose is to divide us. And that's exactly what it's doing. You know, that, and, and, and of course, that's, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm telling on my own, you know, thoughts on this. And I'm not, you know, fully immersed in all of the, you know, the, the intricacies of it. But... From what I've I've seen, that's that's kind of my you know kind of my take, and maybe we can talk about this again. We're getting getting out, you know out of time. But any feedback on that? I I know it's uh, yes. Well, you know, the the most obvious thing is mm -hmm. like you said the pigments, mm -hmm. but then some of the loudest voices are are smaller groups like 
transgender and things like that. Yeah, that and and so they're using yeah. the race because if this is a Trojan this they're next and and they've got their yeah, that that is such an excellent race. point because this is a Trojan horse and attached to this in the intersectionality all or all the other minority statuses. Right. You know, women preachers? Why not homosexual preachers? What about the transgender? What about, all, you know, any minority status click that it's all, it's all lumped in together? You know, and so leading the charge, you know, we got the issue with Beth Moore, we got the issue of critical race, race theory, you know, and it's leading the charge. But behind it, there is a whole host of things that are coming along this train. And are as you rightly point, they're attached to it. And if you bring in the you bring in the engine of that train, you're going to get everything that's going to attach all the way to the caboose of the train, you know. And so, but it's you know, well, I say it's it's coming. It's already here. And so, the fight. What do we do about it? Do we do anything about it? Do we care? Do, because we're all independent churches, and you know. And uh, but but anyway, that I I hope I at least gave a, a lay of the land on kind of. You know what? Some of the the fighting the the, the fighting is over. Um, so do we just drop the southern and just become just Baptist? Well, I mean, we we don't. I mean, I, who knows who knows what's going to happen? You know, at the you know at the convention, it may kind of slowly you know slowly you know we're going we're we're on a, on a slow drift right now. Maybe the drift will speed up. Maybe we'll try to turn. You know, uh, you know. Who knows? I think our our first focus is is our individual uh, church, our congregation. But then, you know, if if it goes off the rails at, at some point, then maybe we would address address that issue. Yeah, Five thousand missionaries hanging in the balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and and this as well as other issues, um, you know. Could could jeopardize some of that because I mean there, there's there's churches leaving on both sides of this issue, those for it for critical race theory and those against it and they're leaving. In fact, some have said our cooperative program we're, we're amending it. We don't want it to go because of you know it's already in there. I don't want my money going to, uh, going to this and and so the, you know it's it's already happening. And then after a year with with COVID and finance, you know, and you know, I mean, the the pressure is just is just building, and it's just like, man, we we got to stop the hemorrhaging. And so then it's just like, well, then do we, you know, placate all of these, you know, just just to kind of keep the boat afloat, <laughs> you know? That, that's just just this reality of it. Um, but but no anyway, what's decided, it's yeah. going to be the wrong thing. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and, and like I said, you know, we're so, you know, on, on you know on the outside, you know, looking in, but but we do it, it is our denomination, you know, we are a, you know a part in it and have you know have a voice in it, and um, anyway, and that's why I wanted to at least bring some of these issues are up. Are you going to the convention? I've never been to a convention in my life, so no, I'm not planning on going to the convention, but. It's just, Would you like for Bob to go? No. <laughs> well, may, 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 maybe Bob, you and I could go, and we could do, or June, well, you and I could. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's in Nashville, June. Uh, Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Sixteenth. Something around. Something around there. Yeah. It's just just in a few weeks. But some of these issues, I'm sure it's going to blow up, or at least it'll be. You know, it might make some news media and. Hopefully you'll be a little more in the know. So. Well, Satan, Satan is on about doing what he's always done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He just he divides from within. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we've seen some instances, and even in our own church in the past, mm -hmm. where the division comes from within, and that's what he's doing on a grander scale, just doing what he does, and laughing all the way to the mm -hmm. bank. Yeah. It's divide and conquer. It's divide and conquer, and it takes so many different forms, you know, gossip, slander, you know, and now... Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's just it, 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 we need to be on guard against it. And you, you're right. We, we, you know, in our assembly, we need to, you know, I, I hope to speak truth. Let's stick to the, you know, scriptures. Call me out if I get off base, you know, and and let's, you know, stick to the gospel. We're gospel people, and uh, and we got some good news. 
Uh, there's a, out in the world is just full of bad news. We got That's the good right. news, and we know how to fix and address these things in well, a. Those people have been instructed to love one another, mm -hmm. right. to forgive one another, mm -hmm. right. and to treat each other the way you yourself would want to be treated. And it's just very simple, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you do those three things, you shouldn't really have a problem. No. Except the outsiders trying yeah. to come in and make you mm -hmm. think you have a problem. Yeah. And, and, and when, when there's sin in the camp, there need, it needs to be addressed. There needs to be confession and repentance. You know, there's, a, you know, an offer of, of redemption, reconciliation, forgiveness. I mean, th these are our words. You know, these are part of our, you know, and so we, you know, we, we take the gospel path. And two, I can only, only repent for what I've done. Mm -hmm. I can't go back and repent for great granddaddy because I wasn't there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even know that he did anything. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that's you know that that's why the issue can never be fixed because it you know uh, there the, the, there's no way to erase history generations ago you know you you know now now if if we put our stamp of approval upon it then I'm I'm entering into it and saying okay you know okay then then that becomes an you know an individual thing for me. Um, but um, but anyway, that that's just yeah. yeah who who came up with this critical race theory? And well, um, okay, from what I understand, it it grew out of uh, critical theory, which I think is from uh, the '60s or the '70s. But uh, in the mid to late '80s, it kind of moved from uh, moved to a, a focus of uh, of color and race. And so it's it's from oh the, the, I think the mid '80s, you know. And so I mean it, it you know it, it it's been around for a while. In fact, it's kind of interesting in our you know I mentioned the '95 uh, the, the 1995 resolution that as a denomination we put out. There was a part in it that mentions our I think systemic racism, and this was from 1995. Let's see if I could find that. But anyway, it, 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 it's been around for a few years, growing in popularity, I guess, in academia. I'm not in academia, but then as it's come out of academia, you know, in, in the universities, it's, it's into culture at large, into politics, huge, and into the church, you know. But it's, it's just a, it's a repackaged, instead of class warfare and Marxism, it's a race warfare, you know. It's, and it separates everybody out on either, you're either oppressed or you're privileged. And and so, you know, and that that's how you they, that's how they view the world. Um, the interesting thing is, at our last class reunion, so far as I know, as anybody admitted, the only person in our class that had his doctoral degree was black, hmm. and his wife also has her doctorate. Hmm. There you go. Yeah, but but but, but even. You know, uh, even being so privileged in this worldview, they're still considered oppressed. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah, you talk, be, to, uh, you talk to professional black people, they will let you know right off the bat. Yeah, it, it, it makes no difference how, like, how, how successful. Right yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, you know, in the, in, like in the sports world, LeBron James can be millionaire, probably billionaire, have has excelled and reached the upper echelon of the, the top, but he's oppressed. Charles Barkley yeah. Demento. You know, I mean, you know, but 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 but, but, but that is that is that's that mentality. And and I'll I'll have to say, as Americans, we are so we're all privileged. We are the most privileged people. I don't care what color you are, we, we live better than kings used to live. You know, we, we are the most privileged people on the planet, all of us, you know, um, but, you know, and to whom much is given, much is required. And so we do have a... This yeah. is an American thing, right? Huh? This is an American idea? Or uh, no, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, it maybe morphs in, in other countries, but it, it, is a, it is a powerful movement and, you know, everywhere else that's pitting the, uh, those that are oppressed against those that are considered the oppressors. Now, in, in, in nations, America is the oppressor yeah. against all the poor, you know, we're the oppressor, we're the rich, you know, and, and so we need, to, we need to, be, to be brought down and, you know, and so that, it does have an, an extension, but it does have an American, you know, context within 
what we're at. But. I was reading a little bit about this uh, as you were talking, some of the things I've seen on the internet that some of the black churches left, basically because some of the presidents, the top presidents, Al, Al Mohler, Al Mohler. Uh, mm -hmm. made a kind of, couple of statements mm -hmm. where he agreed with the political side of Trump, mm -hmm. and so that mm -hmm. trickled into the church mm -hmm. in the sense of saying, uh, that there's a problem in the, in the SBC also. So yeah. Politics doesn't make a, a difference. Yeah, they, you know, the, 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 the Trump years as president stirred the, stirred the nation, and that, the, the, that, that, that's in our denomination as well, because you have those on, on both sides of the political issue, um, those, those political issues. And what I don't know, like about this is in that they tied everything else. I think we should be, able, as Christians, to be able to talk about all issues. Yeah, I, and, I agree. And, and, and don't and be fearful. Don't be fearful of it, uh, because how do we get better if we don't communicate mm -hmm. with each other yeah. about hey, what do you feel about this? Mm -hmm. What do I feel about this? And how does she feel about this? Mm -hmm. And what does the Bible say yeah. about this? You know? And and I do think because you know it is such we feel uncomfortable you know with some of these issues that we don't ever talk about them, right. and so things don't get resolved. And I sure. think you're right. We. You know, maybe we surely we can have an open forum and, you know, and, and discuss this as brothers and sisters in Christ. And, you know, maybe we're blind to some some things and get our own blinders off and to communicate back and forth. And um, I'm glad you're doing this because that some of this I didn't have any idea of what was going on. Mm -hmm. How close or similar is this theory to the caste system that India has? Well, I mean, because uh, that's been going on for. Generations. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, all, did you know? Did different nations have different, to use the the social justice, different power structures. You know, there's the there's the caste system there. I think there was a, a book that used that name in applying it to the American, a very popular book. Uh, oh, I think Oprah was was pushing it. I forgot who who wrote it, but but yeah, there's the the, the caste system in India. I mean, we're, you know, in you know in England. I mean, if you're of a, a cer certain bloodlines, I mean, it, it does. It, it it separates people, you know, out in different classes, and you can never go above your your class. Well, in our context, all of that was rejected. In fact, you you know those that just started the nation here, they I think they had to sign something. We we totally reject that. It makes no difference your background, and you know we we we, we jettisoned all that because there was a a different um, you know a different mindset, uh, and and it was slower in our history before the black population was brought in on that, you know, after the, the, the 13th and the 14th Amendment. And, and, and so we were slow in getting to our own standards, but those still are our standards. And there are obviously issues and have been issues and will remain, you know, issues. But I, you know, I, I, I don't think it is infused into every aspect of our existence here. You know, and yet that's that is the charge. Um, even I, our, even our I churches. I think most people don't even think about things like that unless it's brought mm -hmm. out and hit them yeah. in the face. And and you know, and, and and part of it, which you know, could be a good aspect of this, because they say, well, that that's just evidence that that you're you're um, you're uh, Margaret, you're immersed in your uh, privilege, because you you can live in society and and not even feel it, to where not everybody can do that. And so, well, okay, well, let's you know, let, let's talk about that, you know, a, a little bit. And I think that you know that that can be a conversation, but it's also, you know, so so I'm a racist because I'm white. You know, and I'm I'm privileged, you know, because I'm a male heterosexual, you know, and I'm, you know, what? You know, I mean, it, uh, I don't know. It, it just, it, it's an attack against individualism. They obviously don't go to work with you every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. is there one scripture that we can preach or is it just the whole gospel? I mean, it, I mean, there, it's just an attack against the whole gospel, but there's no, there's no yeah, the, you know, it, we can preach and say, this is, well, I mean, it's, it's you know, part, you know, part of the, the the gospel, you know, aspect, and where this is anti-gospel because it doesn't have a remedy. It is only condemnation. Only we're only racist. We'll always be racist. This is you know that the, there there is no remedy. The gospel gives some good news that hey, the, the, there's some issues that need to be addressed, but there can be redemption, you know, confession and repentance, and there can be forgiveness. 
There is no forgiveness in critical race theory. In the church, though, Tim, it, God mm. says that he came to save people from every, every tri tribe, language, language nation, yeah. and people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, uh, Revelation 5, you know, 5, 9. Uh, our color distinctives and national distinctives are good and God-given. He's the one that separated us out as, as uh, Babel. And we, again, we ought to have not have color discrimination, but color appreciation. We ought to be able to appreciate each other's differences. That's God-given, just like we ought to appreciate the differences between male and female and appreciate the differences between Jew and Gentile and even different national. We all bring something to the table. You know, it's, it's great. Let's appreciate it. We don't have to divide over it, especially in the church, because in the church, we're one. You know, uh, he makes us one. Um, but, well, we've gone way, we've gone away over maybe we'll, tackle this again as I I'll try to learn a little more before the next time you know because it's I'm kind of not not on, on the end of this well we'll close in prayer and if we want to discuss some more afterwards uh, we can our father lord we do thank you for the variety that you have made in life uh, so many uh, uh, colors so many uh, flavors uh, and we thank you that you have not um, made us all the same that we are uh, unique uh, creatures um, and but all made in your your image uh, lord give us a love give us a patience uh, understanding um, as we uh, deal with uh, uh, deal with this uh, can be a, uh, a tenuous uh, subject uh, in our society and lord um, uh, help us to love one another uh, in our churches in christ's name amen amen